Hello and welcome to Pharma Television News Review here at Bio Europe in Milan, Spring 2011. On this show, I have Remy Delasson, who is a CEO of Hybrogenics based in Paris, France. Welcome to the show. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, Remy, tell us what's happened to Hybrogenics, because Hybrogenics is a, is a well-established French company. Um, it's reinvented itself, I could, I could describe that. It's become a different type of company. So tell us what the recent journey for, for Hybrogenics has been. So um, we just finished uh, Phase 2A uh, clinical study of inecacitol in prostate cancer, in, in fact, castrate-resistant prostate cancer. And that's a very interesting st study, which just uh, terminated in the um, end of uh, last year. And uh, it showed that the, our compound in Ecacetol is very well tolerated. And uh, there is strong presumption of efficacy in combination with the gold standard reference uh, chemotherapy in this indication, which is Taxotil. And uh, now we are preparing for phase 2B and uh, trying to uh, raise the money needed for uh, a big phase 2B. Uh, because this is a very important indication and uh, evidence-based uh, evidence clinical studies requires now a pretty uh, um, uh, lot of uh, patients. Right. So the key thing here is that you've got a, a product now in, in phase two, as you say, going into phase two B, which is critically important for any uh, biotechnology company like Hybrogenics. So when you talk about doing the phase two B, you said it's going to be a big study. So, so what sort of... Uh, number of mo how much money do you need to run a, a trial like that so um, 12 million euros would be needed to make a study about uh, with about uh, 300 patients now because we uh, already uh, tested our compound in a total of uh, 54 patients for the dose escalation studies we tested nine dose levels and uh, we managed to go as high as four milligram per day for 18 weeks without any toxic toxicity concern and 85% um, of the patients responded to the combination of taxotere and inecacitol. And what we want to confirm in this phase 2B is uh, this increased response rate because taxotere alone, usually there is a 62 thirds, 67% response rate. So we got 18%, almost 20% more patients uh, who are responders. That's a very important uh, uh, finding that we want to confirm in this phase 2B. Right. And why is it that prostate cancer has become such a big topic now? Why there's been a, it's been an area that's, that's had numerous attempts to try and come up with some specific therapy for it. So what's, what's changed in this particular area? So in fact, if you look at prostate cancer, it's a very long uh, cancer. And a major uh, breakthrough achieved, uh, was achieved in the end of the 80s with a chemical castration. But it was in the very early stage of prostate cancer. Uh, a time of diagnosis where the cancer is hormone responsive. And uh, it was a breakthrough because before uh, it was a surgical castration, which was uh, uh, applied to the patient. So it was uh, really a, a breakthrough in the uh, end of the 80s. And now in 2004, Taxotere also was a breakthrough in prostate cancer because it provided 2.5 uh, months more of overall survival in, on average. And that was also uh, the second breakthrough in this field. I agree with you, it was quite long after the first breakthrough. And this has uh, uh, really um, uh, encouraged companies to look into this indication. And now what we've seen in the last uh, year uh, is the result of uh, several different studies with new agents. But in fact, I agree with you, colon cancer, breast cancer have been much more active in terms of combination product and uh, uh, improvements in uh, the, 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 um, how the management of patients. But prostate cancer has encountered uh, still two breakthroughs with uh, chemical castration and taxotere. It was not such a lost space for, uh, for a while. Sure, sure. Uh, going back to hybrogenics itself, um, you have uh, this, obviously, this very clinically important program going on. What else is happening at hybrogenics? How would you describe the company today? So uh, last year, it was very important that uh, the technology platform on which the company was uh, founded 12 years ago was established as a fully uh, owned autonomous subsidiary. And uh, it's a 3.5 million euros uh, business. 
and uh, we will show for the first time an official profit with this activity for the 2010 exercise. So that's very important because uh, uh, that means that we kept growing the business with this uh, platform. It is stabilized and it can live by itself now. That's very important. Right. Could you tell us what the platform is? So it's um, based on the yeast to hybrid technology. It's a very complex technology to do a simple thing is to find the partner of proteins with which they interact to do their job. It's almost uh, to provide a LinkedIn type of uh, sheet for a given protein to know which, uh, with which proteins they are interacting, working in the same family and uh, the same pathways. So is it, it's, it's basically a discovery to tool? Would you describe it as a discovery tool? Absolutely, it's an early stage discovery tool and not only for pharma targets, it is applied to all living organisms and it has attracted clients from uh, cosmetics because L'Oréal is a big client of us and uh, also for the agribusiness. Monsanto is also one of our clients and um, we have had also some uh, protein biochemists from all academic labs who wants to find fast and accurately uh, protein interactors for their protein of interest. Right. And just in terms of your French, obviously, uh, French biotechnology company, what is the, what is the uh, business mood in, in, in biotechnology in France at the moment? How would you describe that? It's a good mood because very realistic. Many companies have uh, achieved a mature state because now we have 20 listed companies on the Alternext or even on Eurolist in a wide array of different activities from MedTech with Carmat, the artificial heart, which is now a star on the French uh, marketplace, uh, to um, genome uh, engineering with Selectis, and uh, you can also name uh, um, uh, Vivalis uh, with some cell lines to do vaccines. So the French uh, biotech field is uh, very active and uh, uh, hybridogenics is part of it. It's also one of the oldest one, but yes. uh, uh, we uh, got on the public market in 2007 and we tried, uh, and we tried to play our own partition with clinical R&D on the one hand and a uh, technology platform doing services business. Sure. And uh, for you to raise the next round of, of finance, will you look for that money within, within France alone or would you look for it outside France and uh, across Europe or even USA? It's clear that we have uh, uh, made contacting, uh, especially in the U.S., because we are looking for a partner to develop in Ecacitol in the U.S. And uh, we found also the U.S. market to be more receptive to uh, uh, new activities. And uh, 12 million uh, euros uh, are needed, but it's not uh, through fundraising that we are thinking uh, uh, to raise that money. We are looking for a partner that okay. could uh, help develop the drug with us. Remy, thank you very much indeed for coming on the show. Thank you, and thank you for your interest in hybridogenics. Yeah.